Welcome back to AI War 2 Beginner Walkthrough. We will indeed be stepping up to a more strategic layer for this episode, but before that, I want to deal with a very observant comment that was made by somebody on the last video. Coker4D asked, why did you build your command station so far away in Thaf? Wouldn't it have been better to block off this wormhole? from the enemy coming in through Vibo and into Murdoch. That's not an exact quote, but that's the basic gist of it. And basically the answer is, I think he's right. I'm not overly concerned with making small strategic mistakes in this beginner game. But the main reason I did is in AI War Classic, you had long range turrets to start things off, specifically the spider turrets, which I loved, and the snipers. And so the idea was build as far away from where they come in, you have as much time to attrition them down before they actually get to your command station and blow it up. However, that doesn't exactly apply here. We only have one kind of turret available in this system, the pike turret. Now the ambush and concussion ones that we built in Murdoch, those were actually part of our guard fleet, which is not in here, of course. So the pike turret, and it's not a hugely ranged one. In fact, if you stick it over here, you can see it just about perfectly covers the range here. So this is a optimal situation. Now, if I could only guard with these turrets against one thing, because I can't guard the command station and guard against them coming into Murdoch. Now, yes, if I put the turrets here and they would still have to go through its path, it would probably be even better to blockade this. How do we make that happen from where we are? And this is sort of a teachable moment as well. You can just go, if you want to change the command station, you can just go click on one of the other types. Let's say I want to change the economic. Do you want to transform it? No, I don't want to do that. I want to move this somewhere else. Command stations can't move. They have no engines. So if you want to actually relocate them, you simply destroy them. The scrap button is here, or you can see that's the delete hotkey and they give you a prompt to confirm. Yes, Thaf command station has been destroyed. Okay, and then we're just gonna wanna rebuild it. And I'm just gonna stick it right behind the wormhole up here and we'll get defenses set up for that forthwith. But for the moment, let's just head back into Murdoch and get to the real agenda for today. Now notice the color of the wormhole here. It would be blue, but it's actually white that means neutral because we are rebuilding and so we don't actually control that system very temporarily we will again soon as soon as the new command station is up and running we're going to head over here to intel and this gives you a bunch of sort of big picture helpful things to look at they're not things you have to accomplish these aren't like mini missions in the game or quests they're simply things that are useful to know. Prime objectives at the top. Locate Overlord number one. The most straightforward way to win the war is to find and destroy all the AI King units. This AI Overlord is one of them, and in our case, the only one. And then scout the rest of the galaxy. Always wise to get more information. So aside from defending our homeworld, that's what we want to do. We've got to kill the AI Overlord eventually. And then it gives you other things you can do. There are places to capture more turrets, places to get new fleets, to capture other things. We're going to get into all of that. But notice the color-coded enemy defense estimate. That's not just how much is in the target system, but how much you have to go through to get to the target as well. Like it counts the defenses between your, cell, your system and there. So if it's a long distance away, it's going to be inherently a higher number if you've got to go through lots of hostile territory ways to gather more resources and it's showing that we have more science left on Murdoch, more science and hacking to gather on Thaf. And then let's take a look at beginner tips. Capture a few planets. You want to capture a few planets early to acquire more science and metal. Not so many as to drive the AI progress up too quickly though. Typically three or four is a good number. Often the best initial planets to take are those with fleets for improved offensive ability or global command augmenters for improved defenses on them. And those are simply known as GCAs for short. And that's generally good advice. And then it says you should defend Murdoch from waves because of the warp gates nearby. True. Spend science to strengthen your forces. Advice here is to, in general, you want to spend equally between fleet ships slash frigates 
and turrets. You can get more science by capturing planets or hacking a planet. So I think the best use of the Intel panel is just if you get stuck, if you don't know what to do. The more experienced you become with the game, the better you become at the game, the less you're going to need it. But you can see at a glance where all of the things are. Like just for example, the, you know, the GCAs. Global Command Augmenters. Let's say you had decided you wanted those. Well, you could just go in here and say, oh yeah, okay, that's right. Those were on Shinda and Wolfram. And then you know where to go to get what you need to have done accomplished. And it's actually even better than that because as we'll see in a bit, if you right click on any of these, it will take you to that location on the galactic map. You don't have to go there and just hunt around for the system. It'll take you right there and then you can get that accomplished. But let's take a look at science first. And that's over here in tech, the T key. And we've got this nice big list of things. And this works very much differently than in the first game where you sort of had a discrete one-to-one -one relation. Let's say you decided that you really liked a certain type of starship or you really liked your bombers or your fighters or whatever and you really wanted to use them a lot in this particular game, you simply put in whatever investment of science you needed to upgrade them to the next level, and then you would have more of them and also a more advanced version of them. There's a lot more strategic thinking required and a lot more combined considerations that go into research in AI War 2. One thing to keep in mind is there's a mark system still in place. For example, if we take a look at our station keeping assault frigate here and you see it says mark one and those are the stats for mark one every ship type turret type etc your combat forces a mark level of one through seven and that just generally describes the quality of it they're also color coded mark one and two are fairly close together mark three is fairly respectable mark four is quite solid and then mark five and up are definitely a force to be reckoned with and it's all relative to the type of unit it is I mean having a mark 7 drone is not going to mean that you can take it and it's going to destroy a guard post by itself it is in general a good synopsis of the capabilities of your fighting forces if you have a general idea of what mark level they're at and if you see something that you're going to attack that's a much higher mark level than you have that's a problem, and you really need to take that into consideration. How that plays in here is each of these weapon techs will upgrade specific units that use that particular weapon type to the next higher level mark. And it doesn't just upgrade the weapon. It upgrades various aspects to get to the next level. The hull types also do the same. And if you notice, you've got to upgrade six times to get from one to seven. And so you've got, each of the weapons can be upgraded four times, but they're cheaper because they don't affect as many different units. And the hull types are more expensive, but and you can only upgrade them twice, but they'll affect more unit types. Now, if we take a look, for example, here at the light hull, you can see it affects the concussion corvette, station keep and watchman frigate, and the V-wing. And then there's other ships at the bottom, raider, raptor, and siege frigate, that we could capture and it would also impact them. Whereas some of these up here, see technologist affects nothing that we have and only a couple that we can capture. Uh, the melee is the same, like the concussion would give us the corvette and turret. So what this does, this whole system does, is a number of things, but it gets rid of rigid build orders. You can't go into the game and know before you start. Well, I always start with these ships I'm going to want to get these upgrades, etc. That's not going to really fly because you don't know what type of capturable fleets and turrets you're going to have out there in the galaxy, and therefore you don't know which of these upgrades are going to work the best for you. Now, in saying that, I realize that's not for everybody. From what I have seen, it's the single most criticized part of AI War 2 compared to the original, especially from people who played the original. And I don't have a problem with criticism of the games I like. 
but they've criticized the fact that they like the rigid build order. You know, people say things like, look, I used to pick a planet with the sniper bonus ship type, and then I would upgrade my bombers right away, and then I knew I would be able to knock out enemy defenses quickly. And, you know, that was a very viable play style. I think it really comes down to, do you like replayability through randomness, or do you like replayability through customization? And AI War 2 has a lot of both, but for a significant minority of people, it's been sort of a bridge too far, you know, that the whole fleet system and tech system just combined to take that control away from them. And I think it's much better if you have what I consider to be significantly greater strategic depth in this game for this aspect because you have to adapt to what the galaxy gives you. I mean, you've still got plenty of startup options. It's not like you have to stick yourself in a super tough situation. Here we are playing a difficulty four AI that we're expecting to raffle stomp all over the galaxy. But it is worth noting that's a criticism that's out there. And from a certain playstyle perspective, yeah, it's valid. Another thing that I want to just highlight real quick, and I think this is just a brilliant piece of design. In the original AI War, it got a little fiddly to compare the different mark levels of ships. And you have to remember what the numbers were, and there's so many numbers in the tooltips and compare and contrast. Let's go back to the light hull we were looking at earlier. And if you look down at the very bottom in the blue, it says hold C and click here to view details on all the ship types upgraded by this tech. And there we go doing that. And it talks about how much science you need up there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you've got all the comparisons down here. And let's just take a look at the concussion corvettes. And this tells you what your cap's going to be for every fleet that has them. And you've got, I mean, this is the strength value goes up from 0 0.03 to 0 0.04. The hull goes up. The shield goes up. A lot of this stuff stays the same. The damage goes up. Range is still the same and we actually get 10 more of them. So we've got a 25% increase in the number and also each individual ship is more effective. Pretty much every building in the game that I found that you can acquire new ships or new turrets, you can do that. You hold C, you click on it, and it gives you this big detail. This is exactly what you're getting if you do this. And it even gives us the same thing for the ones that we could capture that we don't even have yet. So if you ever run into a ship and you're like, I don't know what that does, you know, just, you can pull that up, takes care of all that problem for you. Especially when you're first learning, keep a few thousand science in the bank so that you can adapt to changing conditions. You don't want to get in a situation where you're out of science and you need to upgrade something because your defenses aren't holding or you can't break through this next system and not have any science to invest in it. That's the weapon and hull upgrade types. And then we've got the civilian here. We can upgrade our engineers with engineering, metal generation upgrades, the metal resources that you have coming in. And it is generally considered a poor investment because as your empire gets larger, you'll eventually have enough resources when it comes to metal. Then we can upgrade our different types of command station. Those are fairly expensive, but they are powerful. And then we can upgrade our force fields, minefields. The sentry stuff has to do with like tachyon arrays, gravity generators, the sentry frigates, as you can see. And then we can also upgrade our tractor beams down there. And if you're thinking just now, my goodness, that's a lot of stuff. That's not all of it. This list is populated by the types of things that you have access to or could potentially capture. There are other weapon types that are not on this list because we don't have any ships and don't have knowledge of anywhere where we could get any more ships that would fit that weapon type. There are various exotic things in the galaxy that we have most definitely not seen yet that are awaiting our discovery and that will unlock even more tech situations. So you don't want to do a calculation of, well, I'm going to capture about this many planets, so I'll divide my tech up this way. Wait till you've played a few games to really, you know, get a good handle on that. For today's final subject to cover, we are, believe it or not, actually going to go to the galactic map. Yes, finally. So I'm going to head back to Intel real quick so I can demonstrate what I was talking about earlier. 
you can just go up here and click on the planet name, or you can hit the tab hotkey. But instead, I'm going to say hypothetically, let's say we were going to go capture the GCA on Shinda. We're actually going to do that. You can see the different structures it would give us, by the way. Right click. Ta-da! Turns out that's one of our neighbors. Okay, we're going to zoom out here, and you've got the same, you know, drag control that you do on the planet map. And notice you can still see all of this information. They really did a lot of work in improving the galactic map late in development, and I think it really helped. Now, at the start of the game, what we had explored was this. This section right here. And all the other ones that are red around it, here, 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 those we got as a result of capturing Thaf, because that is the primary way of scouting. You capture new planets and you gain, through whatever method you may perhaps like to invent, sensor logs, whatever, knowledge of more planets further out in the galaxy. Now, the entire galaxy is 100 stars in this case. And we can see Thaf currently neutral, so it's yellow. The red is the AI, and of course the blue is us. And if you look at the wormholes, the fact that we don't have this captured gives us a bit of a sight on how these paths work. And I should be noted, you can't just travel from like Murdoch to Vibo. That doesn't work. You can only travel via the wormholes, which means you can only travel in the star lane paths or whatever you wish to call them. So the dotted lines are basically like hostile wormhole connections. And then if it's solid, that means it's not hostile. The white is neutral and it'd be blue once we capture Thaf there, but then this would become hostile and the red between their planets, obviously those are safe. So hostile wormhole connections have the dotted and sort of secure ones have this. Now then the other thing we've got as you can see, it's got our fleets, the mobile fleets. We don't have our planetary fleet down here. We got an icon for our Joviad Guard Battle Station, for our Odinites Combat Factory, and over here for our transport flagship. And we've got these strength numbers. And this is telling us, you see, mobile strength of 6, immobile strength of 1. And the tooltip comes up over the planet, not if you hover over the numbers. That kind of confused me at first. Hover over the planet, and it's going to bring up all that information. Mobile strength here of 1 and immobile strength of 12. And so of course, most of our mobile strength is in here. And then we've got seven, seven, six, six, and so on. And if we zoom out, you can see a lot of these have a one. Planets have a mark level as well, indicating their strength and also determining what type of defenses they get there. But look over here, we got a two, we got a four in Nygaard, not that hugely far away. Most of the other ones are two. so. By far the worst one that we've seen so far is Nygaard. That's a four, a mid-level planet. And notice the guard defense. 38. Everything else is single digits except for, okay, these are like 11 and 13 for the Mark II. We got sixes and sevens around us in the Mark I, and that is 38. So that just gives you a little bit of a sense of the scale. But right now, we would not be in a position to take that planet. Generally speaking, because of the rebuilding that your ships do, you can take a planet that's got slightly higher than whatever strength of fleets you're bringing in. But 6 versus 38 would probably die horribly. So we don't want to do that. Okay, then all these other icons here, they are the special, like, capturable, hackable, whatever things. Like this one is that global command augmenter. And then over here... We actually already captured this. There's an advanced research station. We can hack that. And if we just press the C again, there we go. And it's going to tell us all about those parasites that we could potentially get there. And when you take an advanced research station and hack it, you don't have to capture the planet. But you have the three options down there you can see in the tooltip. You can grant the ship line, which means we get those parasites and they will be added to whatever fleet did the hacking. We can re-roll the contents of it. And that would give us a different ship type to choose from. Or we can simply hack it and simply get raw science from it so that we can do more research on our own. So there's usually multiple options with those. If you look at the global command augmenter, it says to claim this, you must control the planet. It will cost a thousand metal. On the other hand, you do also have the hack command augmenter option down there as well. And over here, Vazirani has 
a new fleet that we could claim. And for these, there's no hack option. You capture the planet, it's going to cost 50,000 metal. You can see it says Fleet Strike Denent there at the bottom. So we can see that the blue icons are our fleets, the white ones, gray ones, whatever, are capturables. And then there's these, the ones that are the color of the AI. And those are destroyables. And the ones we have available right now in both Vazirani and Thaf that I've been studiously avoiding mentioning until now are the distribution nodes. And you can just see down there in the tooltip, AI progress will rise by one if this dies. And if we if the player kills this unit, meaning we don't get this if something else kills it, that's important, particularly in more complicated scenarios, they get a thousand science and also 20 hacking points. It's not a huge benefit. I think for one AI progress, it would be very much well worth it. But on the other hand, you'd want to be careful because if you went around slaughtering the galaxy, slaughtering a whole bunch of these, you know, you could drive your AI progress too high and then you could run into trouble. So never do those things capriciously. So we should have a much better handle on things now. We've seen the Intel tab where we can go if we get stuck. It gives us all kinds of ideas on what we should be targeting. There's still lots of capturables and destroyers we haven't gotten into yet. We've seen the tech panel, all of the technology options that we have, and we can invest our science there whenever we wish. And we have a basic idea of what's going on on the galactic map. So moving forward, I'm going to be proceeding with the plan to surround our home world with friendly systems so that we are at least vaguely well defended and we'll be picking up the research station GCA and the new fleet in the process and then we'll just sort of see where we stand from there but we should be in fairly good position to do a little bit less exposition and a little more action going forward and someone did mention in the comments they're interested in seeing hacking and all that. That's going to be happening in the next episode as well. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you'll stick with me for that. AI War 2 Beginner Walkthrough will continue.